Hey gang, it's Paul with Stud Pack. As a lot of you know, we live in Southern Louisiana. And what does that mean for us? It means hurricanes. We have a whole season dedicated just to hurricanes. It started a couple of weeks ago on June 1st, and it ends at the end of November, five long months. And with all the damage a hurricane does, what a lot of people worry about is power outages. It can be anywhere from 30 minutes, two hours, two weeks. You never know. And not having power in Southern Louisiana in the summer is a real drag. Your AC doesn't work, so you're sweaty and you can't sleep at night. Your fridge doesn't work, so you're starving and you're fumbling around the house with flashlights, candles, or maybe your phone if it still has a light on it. So what do you do? You get yourself a backup generator. Now they fall into one of basically two categories. You can get more or less a permanent one that hooks up to the natural gas on your house. It turns on automatically when the power goes out and it shuts off automatically when the power is restored. The other option is a portable generator. That's what we have here at this house. When the power goes out, you drag it out of the shed, fill it up with gas, hope it starts, hook it up to your house, and you're good to go. So we're on this project today because we have a deadly generator setup. We're gonna show you what's wrong with it, fix it, and hopefully save a couple of lives. So how does a portable generator work? Well, we pulled it out and it's right here. It takes gasoline, you start it up, and it's generating power. Now you can do this in one of two ways. You can open up these and you can plug in a bunch of extension cords. Run them through the open door in the back of your house. Run one to the fridge, one to a TV, maybe one to some lamp somewhere, maybe one to some plug, something to power your phone, get your internet back, who knows. But you're kind of limited there because it won't run your AC. And we don't live in Southern California anymore, so we need AC, it's a big deal. So most people tap into the 240 here, and this generator is rated at 30 amps. It will run their AC, but you can't run a lot of stuff in addition to that. So they'll run their AC for a little while, cool down the house, turn off the AC, and then turn on their fridge. Kind of a pain, but it's a lot better than being without power, right? Now the way this works, you got this twist lock plug right here. It only goes in one way, and then you twist it so it doesn't come out under the vibrations of the generator. The other end of it is gonna plug in right here and power up this cable that's in the wall. And we're gonna talk about all this later. There's a lot wrong right here, but anyway, but right now, this cable goes up this wall, come on in here with me, over the ceiling of this storage room, and it comes down into this breaker, number two and four, in this panel. This is a brand new panel we put in, what, about a year ago? Well, look, there it is right there. April 22nd, 2021, you dude. You put the date on there? Of course. Yes. Excel spreadsheet with all the power. The, the, uh, the red is the generator unit, and then this red is the modem. That way I knew during the project, Never to turn off her modem because she works at home, right? right? Pretty cool. And that cable is coming down the wall into this panel and the black and the red are landed on this breaker, number two and four, and it's a 30 amp two pole. And of course it's in the off position. I'm gonna try to turn it on, but I can't. Why not? Because of this very important piece of hardware called an interlock. The only way for me to turn this on is to turn the main off. We wish we could show you, but the owners are home and I think they get mad if we turned off their AC. Don't you think, Jordan? Probably. But check it out. If I were to turn the main off, then I could slide this to the right via these slotted holes and then I can turn that one on. And why do we need that interlock? Why is that so important? You're protecting the lives of the linemen. During a hurricane, we have crews. They're driving down I-10 from Texas, Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi to help us out. And if Florida has a storm, all our crews are going over there to help them out. Not if, when. Florida That's exactly has. right. So it's very important because what happens if you have this on, the main, and your breaker on for the generator, you're back feeding this panel with the power from the generator. You're also back feeding the main power lines. And we have step down transformers that bring high voltage to low voltage. But when current's flowing the other way, now it's a step up transformer and you can kill somebody. So it's very important to have a lockout and we did that on this panel when we put it in here. Whew, sorry man, I'm out of breath. It is hot in this little room right yeah. here. So let's get outside. The problem is not here. We did this back in April. Look at this nice panel here, bud. Yeah, we, yeah, we see it. We see it? We All see right, it. Excel spreadsheet. All right, let's head outside and show you where the real problem is. So what are the problems? Well, there's a few of them, right? So I'm gonna start with this box back here. Check it out. It's a metal old work box and it's fastened to this hardy plank, a cement product with two little screws right there. And look how loose it is. Would you want to plug this into that during a storm? No. The other problem is this receptacle is rated for 20 amps, just like this plug. It's underrated because we have a 30 amp generator. 
Now the third problem and the biggest problem is this cord used to connect the generator to the house. It's called a suicide cord. How come? Because it has two male ends. What's so bad about that? Check this out. Let's plug this end into the generator. And now what do we have? If Jordan were to start this generator or a homeowner were to start the generator without putting this in the wall first, I've got 240 volts across here and it's gonna kill me. I'm gonna be standing before the pearly gates and St. Peter's gonna say, dude, how come you didn't watch a stud pack video? So what's our game plan? We're gonna gut all of this. We're gonna remove this receptacle and we're gonna remove that box. We're gonna cut out the drywall in the back and put in some blocking. That's gonna allow us to mount this nice Reliant PB30 power inlet box and it's made especially for generator cord connections just like that. We're gonna open this weather tight door and it has a male receptacle. Then we're gonna put a female plug on there so this is no longer a suicide cord and we can connect the two together. Let's get started. So let's demo all this. Now, of course, this is not hot, right? The breaker's off and we're not tied in with the generator. Let's cut this old tape off of here. Loosen those screws. Two. Nope. There we go. All right, bud, what next? We got the clamp and we got these two guys. Let's pull this out. Look at that. That's all that's holding it. Crazy, huh? Let me loosen that clamp in the back and then we'll see if we can get the box out. I'm just gonna remove the whole clamp. Let's see if these wings will go back down. When you tighten this screw, these fold behind the drywall. So I'm gonna loosen the screw and see if they'll go back down. Well, there we go. Just run it off of there. It fell on the wall, but we can grab it. Perfect. All right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab these. I don't want to cut the insulation on this knockout. See how hard it is to get out of there? So I'm just going to pull those, get them straight like that. And then I can pull the box off the cable without damaging that insulation. Just like that. Cool, man. Let me go to the truck. I'm going to get a long drill bit. We'll drill through the drywall on the other side to get our bearings, right? Then we'll cut open the drywall and put in some blocking to securely mount this guy. I keep a quarter inch by 12 inch drill bit in my toolbox in the truck just for such occasions. Check it out. Hopefully I don't drill through a paint can or a gasoline can. There we go. Let's see where we're at, bud. All right. Cool, there we go. All right, our next step, we're gonna put a piece of blocking across here so we have a nice strong place to mount that box to because all we have here is some cement board. So let's measure this and go outside and cut that piece of plywood. Test fit. A little bit of a tap. Yep. All right, let's go drill some pocket holes in it. For some pocket screws, we'll get this thing mounted. You think that'll hold it, bud? Pocket screws are a good way to do this. Otherwise, you're using dimensional lumber like a two by 10 or something, putting a screw at an angle. Could poke through. This way I know I'm not gonna blow through the other side, right? I think six screws are enough. Maybe I should have put a lot more. I'm kidding. It's gonna be strong, man. Just like we like it. All right, done. Next step. Right, that looks good, huh? Nice and strong. So now we're gonna put our box just where we want it. We decided we're gonna line up the bottom of the box with the bottom of our siding. That's gonna look nice. And it completely covers all of this mess. So let's take out our knockout right here. This is a concentric knockout. The inner circle is for a half inch connector. And if you knock out that ring in addition, 
Now you can get a three quarter inch connector. Just a screwdriver and my linesman. Let's knock out that middle one. Just like that. And let's put this up here, Jordan. I'm gonna get my nice Klein level they sent me. Look at that guy, pretty fancy, huh? Now let's make sure we're completely covered. Looks good, huh? Get level. Pencil, thank you. And we're gonna mark our wood. Cause we gotta drill a hole through there with a hole saw so our cable can get through there. So let me run to the truck, get the hole saw. We'll cut that and we're almost ready to run some cable. All right, let's get our connector. I like these metal ones for something like this. Put it in our hole that we knocked out. Put the lock nut on the other side. All right, let's tighten that lock nut. A couple of taps, just like that. That's all we need. All right, bud, let's put this on there, level it again. We'll mark our three screw locations and then we'll pull the cable through there. You ready? All right, got our cable through the hole. We're gaining on it. Let's put it through our clamp and we'll tighten these two screws. And then we're almost ready to mount this to the wall, bud. Man, it is hot and muggy out here. Whew. Look at, Look at that. Nice, huh? Now you know what the trick's going to be? Tightening those two screws because I can't get back there. I can. Can you? Yeah, I'll take if the I, drill. If I hold it like that, can you get back there? Yeah. Good job. Look how great that's going to look. Nice. Cool. All right, let me grab some screws out of the truck. We'll level this one more time. Screw that to our plywood. We're ready to wire it up. Connecting the wires is pretty straightforward. The factory has already connected this green ground wire to this one marked G for ground. The white neutral goes to the W terminal right here. So all we're left with is the black and the red and they go on the X and the Y and it doesn't matter which one goes where. The red could go on the Y and the black could go on the X or vice versa. So we're gonna make those connections and we're gonna take this ground along with this one from the cable and mount them both on that lug right there. Let's get to it, man. I'm sweating up a storm right here. These summer afternoons after a rainstorm, killer. <clears throat> I'm just gonna check this other side the factory did, if I can get in there. Oh, that's a little loose. I got more than half a turn on it. All right. I'll just put the black on right here. And I'm going all the way in so we don't see any copper right here. We don't want any shiners. Tighten this one, two more connections. This was the part I was worried about the most is if I had enough cable we just made it, huh? Yep. I mean, look, how, look at that ground, look how short it is. I did bring some cable, but I didn't, really didn't want to make a connection in here. The electrician who taught me how to do all this stuff, he said, once you're done making all your connections and you twisted this around a bunch, go back around and make one more pass. See that? I got like a quarter turn on that one because the wire's gonna move, look at that. They were tight, but I'm getting another quarter of a turn. I'm gonna get my lineman and put a 90 degree bend in here. And go on the bottom of that lug. Whew, close. I might have bent that too much. Uh, I got some room. There we go. Wow. Just enough. Put that on the top. The people who come behind you are gonna be like, this guy was precise. Yeah. He probably measured that with some calipers or something. If worse had come to worse and we didn't have enough cable, I would have had to go into the attic and try to feed you a little more, right? Right. Or we would have just reached our hand in the hole we cut and tugged on it pretty hard. Mm. Cool, man. What do you think? I think that's really nice. All the grounds are bonded together right here. Our white is on the lug marked W. Our black is on the one marked X. And our red is on the one marked Y. Sweet. Yep. See that little lip on the back for right. weatherproofing? It has to go behind here. All right. So I might have to back good. off that screw yeah. a little. That seems like a design flaw, huh? Well, I mean, it's for weatherproofing. There we go. So it's not supposed to be. Oh, but I'm not on here. Uh, 
Let me see if I can go up enough. No. And not come off the back, but get behind the screw. <laughs> Whew. Oh. That is so much better than what it was, huh? Wow. Check that out. Hey, good job. <laughs> All right. So you saw how careful we were when we cut this out? That's because we wanted to just reuse this piece. I did bring some extra in case I broke it, but why cut a patch when you can save the one you took out, right? Right. All right, let's screw it in. We'll go mix up some hot mud. And give this thing a quick coat. All right, gang, that looks awesome. A little bit of fiberglass tape and some 20-minute mud. We made that patch, but it acted like five-minute mud. It started going off in the pan before we even got in this room. Maybe I'm so hot and the mud was hot. But that's done, and this looks great. It looks a thousand times greater, and it is a million times safer. The only thing that's left for us to do is to get another cord. We could get a female plug and put it on here, but who in the world would ever modify an extension cord? Bozos. That's nuts, right? right? I would never dream of such a thing. I'll probably order one online, the right one, and just have it shipped here directly to him. Cool. So make sure your like button has a proper backup power receptacle, just like the one we put in. Then you can smash it for us, ask a question, drop a comment, Subscribe if you haven't already, because the more support we get, the faster we're out in Texas rebuilding Jordan's house. That's you ready, right. bud? All right, good job. Let's do it.